Now, what we're going to do is show you how to debug an application. This is an extremely important thing to know how to do. Uh, it also lets you be able to see exactly what's happening, what order things are happening, and also it'll kind of drive home some of the things that I was talking about in an earlier video with you physically tracking, you know, okay, well, we click here, that goes to here, it comes back. Debugging an application actually gives us the ability to literally trace into the execution of that program to see exactly what is going on. So what we're going to do first is we have to set a breakpoint wherever we want to start tracing the application. So the first thing we're going to do is set a breakpoint over here, and we're going to do that by double-clicking on the line that we want to break out of the execution of the program so that we can start to trace through the, the steps of what's going on. Now, in the process of doing this, I want to show you what, how a constructor works and exactly what's going on when you call a constructor or when you create one. So in our class two, where we did not originally create a constructor, I want to actually go in and create a constructor. So we're going to go in and create a public and remember that it is going to have the same name as our original. And I'm using a, a new VI plugin that I found. So the little annoying pop-up thing, I'll have to get past. So we're going to create our constructor. And what we're going to do is we're just going to set the, the sum value that we have equal to zero. And we'll set total equal to zero. So what we're doing here is just to add a comment, we'll say initialize our class fields or variables, whatever you want to call them, to zero. Okay, so what we've done is we've created our constructor and I could add a comment here. This is our constructor. And so what I want to do is we're going to start breaking at this point, and then I'm going to trace into this creation and see if we can see what's going on here. So, and I, I don't use uh, this uh, eclipse very much, so um, hopefully this will work the way that it should. Um, so what we're going to do is we need to execute this program, but we don't want to execute it like we're just going to run it because all that's going to do is cause the system to run and execute the program. We want to actually debug it. So to do that, we're going to actually come over here and execute this with the debug command. Now, you'll also notice up here, if I click on run, that I can do a debug. So we can come in here and debug this by pressing... Uh, control, I think it's Control F2, or right here, F11. So if we press F11, this will actually execute the debug. So I'm just going to hit F11. And so let's see, this kind of launch is configured to open debug perspective and suspend, so remember, and yes. So what this perspective, the Eclipse has some different what it calls perspectives, but it's basically a layout of your desktop so that you've got access to other things. So it executes in a perspective of debugging, which adds in here the ability to see the console, to see your variables and other things that you might have. So what we have done is we executed our program, but you'll notice nothing has shown up down here in the bottom yet. But I, I want to first step over this particular line. I don't want to go into this. I want to actually step over and let this execute. Now, to do that, if I come back up here to run, you'll see step over is F6 and step into is F5. So what we're going to do is we're just going to press F6, and that steps over this particular line, and you see down here in the bottom that it's actually showing us the result of it printing that line. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our new instance of our class. But I would like to step into this to see what's going on when we create this. So I'm going to actually press F5 here. And that gives us an error that it can't find the source. So let's hit F6. Uh, so it's not going to actually let me... Here we go. So... I had to press F6 and then F5 again to get in here. So now you can see that the execution has come in and it's actually executing on our 
class constructor. So I'm going to press F6. It's going to set our sum field to zero. It's going to set our total field to zero. And then it's going to exit out of here and return us back to the line where we got called. So remember yesterday when, or the, the other videos that we were going through, we actually had, uh, I was drawing lines. You know, it goes into this function, then it comes back out of that function, back to where it got called from. Well, you just saw that happen in the debugger as it was happening. So, so far we have executed this line and we have created our instance of our class and I just showed you that the constructor actually does get run and initialize our two variables to zero. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press F6 again. And so now what we're doing is we're on this add numbers function. Well, I want to trace into this function to see what's going on. So I'm gonna press F5. And so now I am inside of our, our other class and I'm calling this add numbers function. I'm going to press the F6 key to step over this, the print. And so now you can see hello one down here in our console. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to actually, right now notice when I point to sum that it is actually zero. So it's showing me that right now the sum variable is set to zero, which is what happened up here in our constructor. I'm gonna step over with F6. Now if I look at F or sum, it shows us five. So now sum is equal to five. And the next thing we're gonna execute is this command, but you can see total is zero at this particular point. Now total is five. Now we're down on the end of our function. And so now we're going to go back. I'm gonna hit F6 again. Now we're back to where we got called from. So we came back from here and now we're about to execute our line that's gonna print our total. So I'm gonna press F6. And so now we are at the end of our main function. So what's gonna end up happening now is the program is going to exit and return us back to the source code. So I'm gonna press F6. And so now we're, we're done with the execution of the program. So you can see that using the debugger actually adds a lot of value to, to being able to run Eclipse or any you know Objective-C or really any programming IDE, um, which is an I, uh, integrated development environment. Um, it gives you the, the capability of digging into your application and seeing exactly what's going on when you start to get confused or you think the code's doing one thing. This lets you go in and actually see what is actually being called, the order that they're being called, and exactly what's going on in different situations.